Hey guys, welcome back to um, another Warcry in-depth look at some cards. Today we'll be looking at Zinch Mortals and Zinch Demons because one of our viewers um, requested it. So let's have a look here. <clears throat> I'm going to try and be a little bit quicker than I am usually because um, I felt like a 20 minute long video might be a little much just looking at some slides in Excel. So. Let's try and be a bit quick about this. <clears throat> Starting off, we've got the Zinch Mortals and there's the Zangors in here. The guy with double weapons, his damage output is decent. He's packing 2.6 damage in a single action. Um, that's not great, but at least he doesn't cost a lot either. So in terms of damage per point, he's doing okay. It, it takes two activations to kill him. But again, because his point value is very low, that's to be expected, so that's actually pretty decent point value right there. Next up, we've got the Zango with Shield. He's trading damage for um, defensive value, so as you can see, his damage per point value is very bad. Uh, on, the, on the other hand, though, his activations to be killed are a bit higher with three activations needed and uh, still <clears throat> because his point cost is also higher that gets him to about the same level as the double weapon Zango. Then we've got one with great weapon and his damage is a lot better than the previous ones. He's packing a mighty 4.5 damage which is very good actually. Um, yeah and as you can see, that is also reflected in his damage per point value. Um, I think this is a good fighter to bring, although his activations to be killed are very low, and because he's a bit more expensive than the other guys, that gets him to <clears throat> a less favorable point value in terms of activations to be killed. Now we've got the guy I call Zango Big Boy. I don't know what he actually is. He's he also wields double weapons, but yeah, he just looks a little beefier than the other Zangors, but I, he's not an enlightened because that doesn't really fit his stats, so I don't know what he is. Anyways, his damage is slightly higher than the double weapon damage, actually almost a full point. Um, it's just as much effort to, be, to kill him, so overall I'd take this guy over... Uh, either the normal Zango or the one with double weapons any day. I just think uh, the great weapon one might be a bit better still. Yeah. And then we've got the Zango leader. He's uh, packing four damage, which is mediocre uh, at best. Uh, I think at his, at his kind of points value, I'd expect a bit more. And uh, as you can see, he doesn't come out to be very good damage per points. He is tough to kill though, five activations to be killed, sorry for that, um, and a point value of 0.2. Uh, yeah, I don't know, not the greatest choice in my opinion. Then we've got the Acolytes. Now the Acolytes are interesting because I feel like most of them are very very bad. There's the one with shield, even the one with shield only takes two activations to be killed and he doesn't deal any kind of significant damage so yeah i i would not go for that guy at all same goes for the pole arm pretty bad value for money there at least you can keep out of range of opponents for a turn so you might not be killed turn one but yeah don't like him then we've got the acolyte with the bird um, he's a bit better, his damage is at 2 and compared to like the 1.7, 1.4 the other guys are doing. And that's at least enough to put him up to a mediocre damage values instead of rubbish ones. Again, only two activations to kill him, he's the same defensive stats as the others are. Yeah, I don't know, don't like either of the three. Then we get to the Acolyte with the scroll, and this is an entirely different story because for some reason his damage is incredible, like 5.4 damage for 
a relatively cheap model is very nice. Yeah, and as you can see, that also gets him to a decent point value. Um, yeah, obviously he's also only two activations to be killed and being more expensive than the other Acolytes, that actually puts him to the lowest tier of point value per activation killed. So, yeah, also not amazing, this guy. Then we've got the Acolyte Leader. And what can I say, he's the worst choice probably we've seen so far in the Warband. His damage is just horrifyingly bad. Two damage is not enough for a model that costs this many points. And his activations to be killed are only okay, not even five. I don't know. No, I don't see any point bringing him at all. Then we've got the Enlightened, and there's two Enlightened on foot, and then four Enlightened on disc. So let's look at the guys on foot first. The guy with the pole arm who's on foot, um, he deals a nice 5.4 damage, that's actually the same the Acolyte with Scroll does, and I think they cost about the same money as well. And yeah, his, his damage output is very nice, I like him uh, a lot actually, and it's also a lot tougher to kill him, so he comes out to be at least a medium point value. So yeah, I think he's not a bad model at all to take. Now we've got the uh, Enlightened, Enlightened Leader. Um, basically the same like the Polearm, but with one extra attack and some extra wounds. So um, he comes out to be a bit worse in terms of damage per point value, just because his points are higher. And on the other hand, though, his wounds are that much better that it puts him to a higher point value in survivability. So, out of the three leaders we've seen so far, I think this is the best one. Then we go to the Enlightened on Discs. And obviously, what these guys have is a lot of mobility and they can fly. Um, both of those things are very important in Warcry and sadly not possible to represent in my stats here. They, they don't play a role in damage and they don't play a role in activations to be killed, so uh, yeah, it's just something to keep in mind. Anyways, um, the Enlightened on disc, the normal one, does 5.4 damage, the same as the Enlightened with pole arm. Um, he has the same amount of wounds, so really what you're paying for is the extra movement. And yeah, so therefore his damage per point value is a bit lower. But I think in general he's not a bad choice at all. And we've got the leader on this again exact same combat prowess as the normal guy, as the other leader. So you can see 6.7, 6.7 damage. Those are the same. Um, so again, similar kind of story. He's a bit more expensive, so he won't be in the top damage point per value levels, but his uh, survivability is a bit nicer, though being at a higher point value, his, um, yeah, his, like, in terms of point value, he's a little worse than the other Enlightened Foot Leaders. And then we've got the Enlightened Archer and the Archer Leader. Um, yeah, three points of damage for a model this expensive is just bad, and I know it's on range, and obviously range is always balanced a bit different, but I really don't think he's worth bringing at all. I think he's only got two attacks. Yeah, no. Horrible, horrible choice, in my opinion. And same goes for the Archer Leader, actually. He's doing a bit more damage, that's because he's got an extra attack, which is nice, don't get me wrong, but again, for his point value and comparing him to what the other kinds of Enlighten give you, I don't think he's worth it. So, yeah, th that's my overview for the Zinch Mortals, and now let's have a quick look at the Zinch Demons as well. The Zinch Demons, um, they have less models, a uh, smaller selection, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. And now don't be immediately put off by the amount of red and yellow you see in here. I know it's a bit shocking. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that once we get to it. Um, let's have a look at the Screamer first. 
the screamer he's the only kind of melee focused um, guy in the warband and his damage output is actually quite nice he also has a nice ability which um, allows him to pin people in place which isn't bad however he is very easy to kill and as you can see if we divide the activations to be killed by point by his points he comes out to be very very squishy and not having any ranged option means he needs to get in there and therefore he will take counter punches which will get him killed quite quickly and yes he does have good uh, movement and fly which isn't to be underestimated don't get me wrong but i still think he's a bit iffy in terms of point value <clears throat> then we've got the blue horror the brimstone horror and the pink horrors obviously the pink horror can split on a double into the blue horrors and the blue horrors can split into one brimstone horror um, although to be honest from what I've seen, that ability doesn't come into play very often because all of these have very low activations to be killed. Many of them will be killed in one activation, the pink ones in two activations because of the low toughness and low wounds. So, in many cases, you won't ever get a chance to split them. So, an ability that reads quite strong at first turns out not to be as strong at all because you just get your models killed before you before you can ever split them. Now for damage, um, the pink one is the best because his crit damage is four, the blue horror's crit damage is three, and the brimstone horror's crit damage is two. So that's the difference between their damage. And yeah, in terms of damage per point, they are all at the lower range but then again this is kind of typical for archer units like all ranged units have a lower damage per point value so i think they are still okay i definitely not go for the blue and brimstone horrors i'd go for the pink ones because at least they can take one hit without dying immediately so i like that and their damage is also a tiny bit better Spamming these, I think you can get some decent damage across the board, especially having, I think it's 12 range, or 10 range, 10 range actually, I think. Yeah, it's not too bad. Then we've got the horror leader, which is only one of your two leader options. And he does the exact same amount of damage the pink horrors do on at range. He does a bit more damage in close combat, but yeah. Again, I didn't show that here because I feel like the primary role of Horus is to to be ranged characters, not to be melee fighters. So, yeah. Anyways, his range damage, obviously, in terms of points, comes out very bad. His activations to be killed are nice. I don't, I don't dislike those. And, yeah. Anyways, looking at the Flamers, we've got three variants of flamers the flamer the flamer leader and the exalted flamer the flamer itself has a bit higher damage output than the pink horrors and stuff at a damage of profile of 2-4 obviously he can deal a bit more and still yeah same thing if this was was a melee model he'd be quite a bit better um, he'd probably deal more damage and yeah, I don't know. Having ranged and having that quad ability that is actually quite nice. I've I've seen Zinch on the Warcry battlefield for about five or six battles now. And that quad ability the Flamers get seems to be quite strong. So yeah, I don't know. He's not bad actually. But this one is pretty easily killed as well. So if you want to get in there and use that quad ability that deals damage to all surrounding enemies. You're obviously putting yourself in harm's way as well, which might mean you're losing that model quite quickly. Then we've got the Flamer Leader. Um, same kind of damage. He gets one attack more. Um, takes him takes a bit longer to kill him. I think he's on double the health points, and therefore he's a bit better than the normal Flamer. But the one taking the K clearly is the Exalted Flamer. His range damage output is nice, his damage per point value again 
just typical range stuff is still not great but at least he's got good activations to be killed at I think it's 20 wounds he doesn't go down quite as quickly so I think bringing one of these in each of your war bands is pro probably going to be worth it um, so yeah just just to compare the two um, I don't know if you if you want to play more melee focus definitely go with the Zinch Mortals I don't think any of the ranged options are any good so yeah drop the enlightened archers go with some of the enlightened on foot probably I like the pole arm I like the Zango with great weapon I also like the Zango big boy as I called him like the one with double hand weapons with the better stats yeah I think going with those forgetting about most of the acolytes um, you're going to get a decent melee focused warband for the Zinch demons I don't think they are bad but they are going to struggle and let's not forget there's some twists in Warcry which se severely hamper ranged combat and that's like middle of the night that's um, dawn and dusk so where your range is limited and those are the kinds of twists that will absolutely shred this warband and yeah I think they're going to be good situationally but Definitely not in every case. Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know which warbands you'd like to see next, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you.